and filmmaker Ken Burns and writer Jeffrey Ward joins us now to talk about the Roosevelt's and intimate history. And Jeffrey Ward, 14-hour documentary covering more than 100 years of history about three of uh, the most famous Americans. Did you think there wouldn't be enough material with just one of these people if you just focused on one of them? We could have done 140 hours. It is the most extraordinary story of an incredible family and an amazing country. And Mr. Burns, why the Roosevelts and, and why now? Well, this is a family that touched more Americans than any other family in American history. We say that out front and I think we go about proving it. I think that they raise issues that we're dealing with today about the role of government and the nature of leadership and the tension between idealism and uh, uh, pragmatism. But I think the important thing is that traditionally we've covered these guys independently. We assume that because theaters are Republican and Franklin's a Democrat that you can segregate them and, 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 they, and they can exist in different silos of American history when in fact the intertwined and, and interbraided family drama, they're all born, including Eleanor with the last name Roosevelt, is a much more interesting, exponentially more interesting story when you see how interrelated they are, that there's no Franklin and no Eleanor without Theodore, that there's no New Deal without uh, the policies of not only Theodore Roosevelt's you know, nearly two terms as president, but his attempt to run as president on an independent progressive third party. So you've got a great deal of American 20th century history that is commanded by one or more of these Roosevelts and an interconnected command it is. And then you've got the rest of the 20th century and the 21st century that is still in the wake of their accomplishments. Mr. Ward, not your first project with Mr. Burns, but also uh, not your first project specifically on on the Roosevelts and, and FDR, you've written quite a bit about. What draws you to the Roosevelts? Well, I'm particularly drawn to him because FDR is such a fascinating, opaque person. But you really can't have Franklin and Eleanor if you don't have Theodore. And that's, that's the link that we wanted to show both in the show and in, and in the book. Um, they are, to me, inexhaustibly interesting people. And uh, it was a great privilege and joy to do that book. And the book, uh, we can show you The Roosevelt's an Intimate History, a companion piece with the 14-hour documentary that's airing all this week on PBS. Mr. Ward, uh, or Mr. Burns, I I've heard you describe this as an inside-out history. Can you explain that term? Well, often we talk about, and Jeff and I have discussed over the 32 years that we've collaborated on what seems at least that many films, <laughs> um, that American history is usually top-down. That's the story of presidents and wars and generals. And that has a kind of uh, linearness and sort of comforting familiarity that that's what passes for most people for American history. We've also understood that there have been recent trends and interest in a bottom-up history that's it's talking about so-called ordinary people, about labor, about women, about minorities, a way to make a much more inclusive history. And we fully joined and participated in that in many things. But in this case, we've subtitled it an, an intimate history. We're saying that we want to know a little bit about these three extraordinary leaders, but we want to understand the way in which character forms leadership, and more importantly, the way adversity, and all three of them had it in spades in their lives, the way adversity helps to shape that character. And so it's inside out in that this is not a psychological psychobabble that's going on here, but we want to know who these people are. All of them, as Jeff says in the film in the open, are deeply wounded people. And we want to understand how they negotiated and escape the specific gravity of these wounds to become the kind of people that they are, who I think are interesting to every American because they decided, having once solved it, and these are people to the manner born could have easily frittered their life away in idleness, didn't. They gave away what they'd understood about that. And that's part of our democratic compact that they reinvigorated in a way that I can't think of any two leaders and three if you add Eleanor and she's there um, have ever done. And so as Jeff says, this just livens up page after page of history you can't imagine. And the book that, that Jeff and I have done, particularly Jeff, you know, we want it to be a standalone. We always do these books, people say companion books, as if it's somehow attached uh, to the film. We always make a book, and this is our proudest example, that um, if the series didn't exist, it would be a good book. That's the idea. <laughs> and we want to bring in our viewers to this segment as we're talking to Ken Burns and Jeffrey Ward about the Roosevelt's and intimate history phone lines are open. Democrats can call at 202-585-3880. Republicans, 
585-3881, Independence 202-585-3882. And if you're outside the U.S., it's 202-585-3883. They'll be here for about the next 45 minutes or so as we discuss uh, this 14-hour documentary and uh, the book here as well, The Roosevelt's and Intimate History. And Mr. Ward, I want you to, to pick up on that theme of overcoming adversity. And, and why were these three able to, to do it when so many people around them, including members of their own family, were not able to, to overcome adversity in their lives? I don't think I can explain why they could, but each of them had this, these extraordinary things to battle with. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt was terribly asthmatic as a child, was really told, heard, heard doctors tell his parents that he wouldn't live. Uh, and he dealt with the awful death of his wife and his mother on the same day. And somehow pulled himself up and decided he was going to live what he called the strenuous life and did and became unbelievably strenuous and really taught the country how to do that. Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, his niece, uh, was the daughter of his uh, younger brother who was an alcoholic and delusional and was orphaned as a child and, and was betrayed by her husband and somehow overcame all of that and Franklin Roosevelt suffered from polio, which um, uh, the story of his battle against that is, I think, uh, sort of for me, the proudest part of the film and, and the book, too. I think you get a real a sense with. of it. Yeah, I had polio when I was a kid, yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons I've been so interested in him all my life. And Mr. Burns, did it, did it take it out of these men? I, I guess one of the things I was so surprised about was uh, how young they were when, when they mm, died. And, yes. and here's a picture of Franklin Roosevelt uh, just before he died, and that was age 63. Yeah, yeah. I, I just don't think we can appreciate that these two men essentially gave their lives and their sacred honor uh, to this country. They really sacrificed everything. And if you look at the oldest picture of Theodore Roosevelt, he looks about 85. He died when he was 60. Uh, when you look at Franklin Roosevelt, he looks, as the station master at Warm Springs says, like a cadaver. And he looks like he's 95 or 100, and he died at age 63. And that's um, an incredible thing. They poured, they gave everything they could to the service of this republic. We'll get to our questions from Twitter and uh, your questions on the phone as well. Our phone lines are open, uh, but a question from Rock Dots on, on Twitter. Mr. Burns and Mr. Ward, uh, how did you start working together? Well, I had, uh, I had had an association with American Heritage magazine, and Jeff had been the editor of American Heritage, and I was working on my second film on the history of the Shakers, and I felt that I had run into a kind of roadblock in how we were structuring it. And a friend of mine, a mutual friend of Jeff's as well, uh, had suggested that Jeff come up to our little uh, New Hampshire editing room and, and check it out. And he sort of ratified what we were doing. But I was on the, on the beginning moments of doing a film on the life of the turbulent Southern demagogue, Huey Long. And um, uh, Jeff and I hit it off, and I signed Jeff up to, to uh, write the, the Huey Long script, and the rest is literally American history. <laughs> and, and, and how many films and, and books has it well, been at this point? Well, I, you know, I, 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 could pro I have never counted them, but oh, we went on either. to do, you know, one on Thomas Hart Benton. Uh, Jeff worked on a film that we did on the Congress. He, of course, wrote The Civil War and Baseball and Empire of the Air was involved right. in. And we did biographies on Thomas Jefferson, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Susan B. Anthony, uh, Mark Twain, A History of Jazz, a biography of Jack Johnson, the first African-American heavyweight champion, a history of World War II called The War, uh, biography, uh, a sort of history of prohibition, and uh, the Roosevelt's, and I'm probably missing two or three. And uh, today we're talking about the Roosevelt's and intimate history uh, appearing on PBS all this week. We'll get to your calls. Paul is up first calling in from Kannapolis, North Carolina on our line for Democrats. Paul, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I just want to ask Mr. Burns, uh, but she was playing that again about Helen Orr. I watched that last night. I don't know watch it until it goes off. And uh, could you explain that how he, she was related? Yes. And one more real quick question, Miss Burns. I love your shows. I watch almost every one of them, especially the one uh, Lewis and Clark. Would that ever be back on again? Yeah, you know. 
P PBS plays, Paul, thank you so much. We love that one too. Lewis and Clark is a really good story and every time it plays, PBS plays these pretty frequently. So I, I, I think the admonition to check local listings is the best thing to do. Now this is a very complicated family drama. You know that <clears throat> both 